he's got a brand new book. It's a second book. It's called Imagination, the Science of Your Mind's Greatest Power. Joining us right now, we say hello to Professor at the Institute of Cognitive Science, Carleton University, Jim Davies. Hi, hello. how are you? Good to have you here. All right, new book. You must be excited. Second one now? Yes, yes. Good job. Okay, so let's get right into it. Lots of points to get to here. Uh, what is the difference between creativity <coughs> and imagination? Creativity is creating something new and useful in the world. And uh, imagination is when you uh, generate something in your mind. And the difference is that you can be creative without using your imagination, like when you're doing improvisation and responding rapidly to the environment. Okay. You can also be imaginative without being particularly creative. If you imagine what your kitchen looks like, you might not put aliens in it or anything. You're just trying to hmm. bring something and imagine it in your head. Okay, so imagination then it really is pictures in your head then? Well, pictures are the, uh, the part that we know the most. Okay. But we can have auditory uh, imagination when we uh, have a song stuck in our head or something like that. Or we can imagine touching a cat. So really in all the senses we have things, uh, we call it imagery, which is when you have a sensory-like experience okay. generated from your own memories. Is it good to have a very like, vivid, active imagination? Mm -hmm. People who have active imagination like it. Um, yeah. But there are some things that, um, if it's too strong, some people have what's uh, sometimes called compulsive fantasizing, where they can't stop fantasizing, just lie in bed for hours and turn yeah. down social events just so they can live in their own mind. And, uh, and uh, if it's too vivid, sometimes people can um, confuse it with reality. It interferes oh. with actual vision. So, you know, but, but people with very low uh, imagery abilities uh, manage just fine in the world. Okay, so, so what, are, what are some of the things that people imagine then on a daily basis? People imagine a lot. A lot of what they're doing is imagining the future. So uh, hmm. they will think about what they're going to do or what might happen. Uh, and that can be good or bad. It can yeah. be just simple planning, like who's going to pick up the kid and the dog at the groomer. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could also be like, oh, what happens if everyone figures out that I'm a failure or something like that? Mm -hmm. It can be the root of anxiety. Of uh, anxiety is really based on imagination. Negative right? Because you're imagining negative futures. Yeah, and nobody wants that. But anxiety, of course, is a major part of a lot of people's lives. And <clears> it is. It has a lot to do with it what is. they think about. Uh, imaginary friends, okay? That's something so <laughs> yeah. that, that still happens. Um, can you distinguish uh, fantasy from reality when it comes to imaginary friends? What's yeah, this? there's a fear that, that, oh, my child, if they have an imaginary companion, maybe they can't distinguish fantasy from reality. But truthfully, kids, they, they always know, right? In fact, when scientists ask them too many questions about their imaginary companions, the kids will say, you know, it's just make-believe, right? Because really? okay. they've never been asked that many times. Okay. What's kind of ironic is that um, parents worry about... Um, kids confusing fantasy from reality when they spend an enormous amount of time trying to convince the children of fictitious mm -hmm. characters. So, so why would <laughs> kids have imaginary friends? Why, why does this happen? Uh, we don't know exactly why. Um, I just want to say for one thing that if a child has an imaginary companion, it's n there's no problem with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes they can have an imaginary companion because of neglect or um, if there's another child born into the family, they don't get as much time with the parents. Mm -hmm. Really, it's just another playmate. It's for company. Okay. Uh, but they um, often don't last past age 16, and uh, they're <clears throat> fairly harmless, or they help the kid who is, you know, needs just a friend. When, okay. when the kid has other friends around, the imaginary companion's usually gone. So it's important to note that it's not harmful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Good. Okay, good. Even into the teen years, it's, it's very normal. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hallucinations, that's another thing, obviously, when you're talking about the mind. And, and why do these form in people's minds? There are a lot of ways that hallucinations can form, um, and I'm, uh, and I'm not going to list all of them because there are about eight, but yeah. uh, some of the more interesting ones, um, uh, sometimes people will uh, imagine something, but the message that they're, that they're in the act of imagining will not get passed around the brain, so uh, you experience it and you don't know that you imagined it, and so you interpret it as something coming from outside, hmm. right? So that's, uh, that can happen. Um, it, a lot of people experience hallucinations, even if they're, there's nothing wrong with them. Right? Yeah. People hear a voice in their head once in a while. It's not a big deal. Um, although uh, extensive hallucination is often a symptom of certain kinds of uh, mental illnesses. Yeah, of course, serious. <clears throat> uh, we're going to get to the book in a second, but quickly, dreams. Just give us a little bit about dreams. Why do we dream? Yeah, great question. Uh, and it's still an area of active research and, and debate. Uh, my reading of the literature, what I think is the most plausible theory right now is that dreams are a form of practice, mm -hmm. a safe form of practice, where you can um, imagine yourself in uh, some often dangerous situations and think about how you would react, which explains why a lot of dreams are negative, right? They're yeah. anxiety, social anxiety, yeah. physical danger. You can practice running away from dangerous 
people or things uh, in a safe environment. That's what we think they're for. Okay. I can imagine we could touch on so much more here, but uh, you expand on everything, all these topics in this new book? Yes, there's a different chapter on uh, all forms, every different kind of imagination from dreams to hallucinations, imagining the future, how it can make you happy or miserable, mm -hmm. all of it. Okay, so where can we find the book at this point? Books available in bookstores and also uh, at any online bookseller. Okay, are you going to do another TED Talk because you're a TEDx speaker, aren't Yes, you? I'm going to be a TED speaker at a TEDx Carlson University. That's amazing. Well, that's you've got uh, a lot of stuff going on. Lots to imagine, lots to think about, <laughs> lots right. to dream about. All right. Thank you very much, Jim Davies, for being here. We My appreciate pleasure. your time. Great new book, his second book. Check it out, please. More daytime coming up in moments. Of course, you're watching Rogers TV.